Man, I would really like to know what just happened last team fight. I, I, I tried to use my ult like three times. It just didn't work. Shut down. An enemy has been slain. An ally has been slain. An enemy has been slain. <laughs>
has destroyed an inhibitor. Your team has destroyed a turret. No. <laughs> ah, I dealt more damage than Master Yi. On this channel, we've talked a lot about what makes legacy support good or bad. You know, some people don't like it when legacy support is too generically powerful, and I sort of agree. You know, you want legacy support, in my mind at least, you want it to be good and you want it to increase the power level of the original cards, but you also want it to maintain that original theme's uniqueness. You know, whatever makes that original older theme cool, we want to see that in the newer cards. And with that criteria, you know, modernizing the cards but also maintaining that original part that made them cool i think the new armed dragon support that they just revealed for blazing vortex is great legacy support i think these cards are really really cool and in today's video i want to talk about them now in the ocg they're going to get these cards on october 31st so halloween in the tc though we won't see these cards until 2021 but it is a core set so we do know that we will see these cards eventually it'll just take a little while so when we look at the old 
older armed dragon cards, we see that one of the biggest problems, this is always a problem with level monsters that have been printed, is that they're too slow to level up, and these new cards are going to try to change that, and they do it in a pretty cool way. The other thing, though, is that one of the biggest parts of those armed dragon cards that wasn't bad was their discarding effects. You know, you could pop cards on your opponent's side of the field. That actually was pretty decent. It's just the cards themselves were too slow to actually get to the field. So these cards are going to take advantage of those discard effects while also speeding up the leveling up process, which is pretty cool. The first one is Armed Dragon Thunder Level 3, which is what you're going to see in all of their names. They add in Thunder, but don't worry, they're still Wind Dragon monsters with their original levels. So one of the important parts is that all these cards are treated as their original counterparts while they're on the field or in the graveyard. It's important that they're not that name in the deck because that would prevent you from running the other ones as well. So you can definitely play these cards alongside the original forms. And I think in the case of level five and level seven, you will want to have the originals in your deck because they are quite good. The second effect is how you special summon the higher leveled monsters. So in this case, you can send one monster from your hand to the graveyard, send this card from the field to the graveyard. And if you do special summon one level five or lower armed dragon monster from your hand or deck. So this can not only summon the new thunder level five monster, but also the original armed dragon level five, which doesn't have a half bad effect while on the field. The third effect is basically the Atlantean effects. If you guys remember those from Atlantean mermails. So when they're sent to the graveyard to activate a dragon monsters effect, you get to trigger an ability. And this one's is that you get to draw one card, which is pretty good. The higher level ones though have even better effects. So it's sort of like they're not only the mermails that are sending themselves to the graveyard because that's what their on field effect does, but they're all also Atlantean monsters as well, where their effects can be triggered. Worth mentioning, their own effect does not trigger themselves because that is not sending them as part of the cost. The only cost to these effects is sending the monster from the hand to the graveyard so they will not trigger themselves, which is probably for the best and uh, that would be way overpowered. It's also worth mentioning here that Super Rejuvenation does wow. not work with these cards. They're not discarding dragon monsters, they're just sending them to the graveyard. So unfortunately, Super Rejuvenation will not be like a plus five at the end of every single turn. Although once again, that probably is for the better. Arm Dragon Thunder level five is pretty similar. So the first effect, it is always treated as Arm Dragon level five while it is face up or in the graveyard. The on field effect is upgraded. So it's not just level five or lower Arm Dragon monsters. Now it's level seven or lower. The rest is the same though. So you send this card to the graveyard after sending a monster from your hand to the graveyard as cost. So once again, it will trigger the other effects of your armed dragon thunder monsters. The third effect, which is when it's used for a dragon monsters effect, is that you can add one level five or higher wind dragon monster from your deck to your hand. Notably, other than the other armed dragon monsters, one of the cards that you'll want to be adding and that will be like a guaranteed uh, card in every single armed dragon thunder deck is going to be Tempest, the Dragon Ruler of Storms. That card is fantastic in this strategy. I mean, it's just so good. Obviously, all these cards are wind dragon monsters, so you can banish them for the Tempest, and you could maybe splash in some other dragon monsters or other wind monsters as well. But more so than that, you can actually use the Tempest in hand effect and then discard one of these armed dragon monsters, and it will trigger their effects, which is really, really strong. It's very important to open with the Thunder level 3 monster, Monster because that's what gets the entire combo chain going. So having more ways to search it is always going to be a good thing. Arm Dragon Thunder level seven, you know, same deal here. It's treated as Arm Dragon level seven while face up or in the graveyard. It's on field effects that you can send one monster from your hand to the graveyard. Send this card from the field to the graveyard. And if you do special summon one level 10 or lower armed dragon monster from your hand or deck. And yes, there is an Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. The uh, effect when it's used for a dragon monster's effect is that you can add one arm armed dragon card, not just monster, and there are spells and traps that we'll look at in a minute here, from your deck to your hand. And already you guys can see how the deck is trying to operate. We haven't looked at even half the cards yet, but you can kind of understand. You're trying to level up these cards on the field while also triggering their effects in the graveyard to draw cards or search cards, which is really, really strong. Let's look at the big boss monster though and see what this deck is really trying to accomplish. So we have armed dragon thunder level 10. And I just want to say here, the effects on this card are really, really messy. I've read that I guess it's a sort of a shout out to the GX series and something that Chaz says, but I don't really know, but I guess that's what it's supposed to be. But it's kind of messy and it's going to be a really long effect text when 
this card actually is printed in the TCG. But regardless, here's what it does. Apply one or more of the following effects according to this card's attack if it was special summoned by an armed dragon monster effect. One or more, so that means one or more attack. This card's name is treated as armed dragon level 10. 10 or more, so 10 or more attack, cannot change control. 100 or more attack cannot be destroyed by battle. So now we're actually getting to relevant stuff here. 1,000 or more once per turn during your opponent's turn. Quick effect, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one other card in the field, destroy it, and if you do, this card gains 1,000 attack. Keep in mind here that will trigger the other effects of the previous Armed Dragon Thunder Monsters that we looked at in today's video. So you're gaining a lot of advantage from that ability. And then 10,000 or more once per turn, you can destroy all other cards on the field. So why this card is so funny is that one through 1,000, all four of those effects, they're always pretty much going to be there. The card comes out at 3,000 attack. It's really just leading up to the 10,000 attack effect, which is pretty good. Yeah, this card looks pretty messy, but I guess people that are fans of GX might understand the reference more than I do. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty decent boss monster, but let's take a look at the other support cards because while there are the main four armed dragon thunder monsters, there are other cards as well that really do help the strategy quite a lot. For example, we have a light version of armed dragon level 10 that says cannot be normal summoned or set must first be special summoned by its own effect. So you can banish armed dragon monsters or just one monster if you want to from your field or graveyard with a total level of 10. Special summon this card from your hand, then you can add one white veil from your deck to your hand. And we'll look at that card in a second. Um, the second effect is you take no effect damage while this card is on the field. And the third effect is at the start of the damage step when this card attacks, you can destroy one card on the field. Not the craziest card I've seen. It's pretty much all just down to that final ability to pop cards when it attacks. You know, that's not half bad and I'm sure that you'll play this card in an armed dragon deck, but yeah, not as exciting as you might think. Um, if you don't know what White Veil is, it's an older equip spell. It's uh, pretty terrible actually, but we can take a look at it here. So White Veil is uh, this thing. It's from a uh, Duelist Saga. So not super old, but like three years old. You can read the effect here. It's uh, it's not very good. I'll be honest. It's, it's pretty bad. I'm sure there's like a GX lore reason that this thing searches White Veil. I personally don't really know it. Here it is though, if you want to get that free plus one. I'm not sure if people will actually play this card though, because yeah, it's pretty underwhelming. Armed Dragon Flash is a very simple quick play spell that special summons one level three armed dragon monster from your deck in defense position. This thing is perfect. Like I said, you really do want to open with armed dragon thunder level three in every single hand. This gives you three more copies of it. And also, I guess if you wanted to go old school, you could use this card in your opponent's end phase to summon the original level three and then special summon level five in your standby phase. But that's not very good though. So I feel like most people will just use this card as uh, three more copies of Thunder level three, and in that way, it is a very good piece of support. Armed Dragon Blitz is basically the reinforcement of the army for this deck. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. You cannot special summon monsters during the turn you activate this card, except dragon monsters. Target one armed dragon monster you control. Take one monster with the same name from your deck or graveyard and either add it to your hand or special summon it, ignoring its summoning conditions. If you special summon the monster, it can cannot attack directly. Now I think in most cases you will want to add the card to your hand. Keep in mind here, it does add the monster with the same name, not a different name, which means that, yeah, like the picture sort of shows here, if you have level five, you're adding level five as well. This is fine though, I think in most cases, because for example, if you started off with level three, then you're adding level three to your hand and then you can send to the graveyard to trigger the on-field effect, which will then get you a free draw with the graveyard effect of the monster that you just added. Because while the second and third effect of these armed dragon thunder monsters are hard once per turns, you can use both of them in the same turn, which is really, really good, which I think is what most people are trying to do with Armed Dragon Blitz. Armed Dragon Lightning is a continuous spell that says you can target one armed dragon monster you control and activate one of these effects. It either gains 100 attack times its level, so in the case of like level 10, that's a lot of attack points, and that will get it closer to that 10,000 mark for its final ability. Is that that valuable? I'm not really sure, but uh, anyway, the second part of it that you could do is add one armed armed dragon monster with a lower or equal level to that monster from your graveyard to your hand, which is really, really strong. This gives you a lot of longevity, which I really do enjoy with decks like this. A lot of people only focus on like turn one, and while turn one does matter quite a lot, to truly have a